Amen. My name is Pastor Mike Foster. I'm the lead pastor here along with Pastor Pam. And on behalf of our leadership team and our pastoral team, we welcome you here if this is your first time at Redemptive Grace Ministry. We say that we're a church that loves people. We trust God. That is his mandate, that we love everyone. And, and also, it is really, really imperative that we trust him. You know, man will fail us every time, but we have to trust the word of God, and we have to trust that he is sovereign, that he has a plan for our life, and that through that plan, he is able to get us where we need to be, take us from where we are to where we need to be. So I thank God that you, if this is your first time here today, that you chose to worship with us today. There are literally dozens of churches in the New Braunfels area, and for you to take a moment out of your day to come and be in the house of the Lord with us, we do not take that for granted, and we're honored that you're here with us. Amen? Amen. But if this is your first time, love people, trust God is not a tagline. It is a lifestyle. It is an attitude. It is what we do. It is who we are. And if you come in here, we're going to treat you like family. And it's not like family that don't like each other because there's some dysfunctional families. But we're not a dysfunctional family. We are a family that really strive to not be offended and try not to offend. But this is also a house of truth and a house of grace and a house of love. And I'm getting my microphone changed now. yesterday, and I asked a question and said, why do people not believe that the Holy Spirit is relevant for today? And Pastor D just said, oh, and that's his way of saying that that is a good point because people don't believe that the Holy Spirit is relevant for today. That when the Lord left, and I will get into the scripture, he said that I will send to you a comforter, a helper, Counselor, teacher, and the Holy Spirit is not an it, it is him. It is, it is the third part of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He, he moves and he lives within us, and the word says that, that Christ said, greater works will we do, not 
in, in magnitude or quality of what he was doing, but in multitude, because now we have the Holy Spirit in us, and there's millions of us all over the world, and we could be all over the world, not in Judea, not in Jerusalem. We're all over the place, and wherever we go, we take the Holy Spirit with us. So it is so imperative that we, we study this because there is one spirit that is holy. There's one spirit that is holy. It's denoted by his name, the Holy Spirit. That tells me that there are some spirits that are not holy. And if there are some spirits that are not holy, which spirit are you yielding to? So we're going to take our time and we're going to teach this because there are some imperative things that you need to understand about the Holy Spirit. There is a difference between being filled with the Holy Spirit and being baptized in the Holy Spirit. The filling of the Holy Spirit comes at the moment that you ask Jesus into your life and accept him as your Lord and Savior. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. He is in you. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is different because when the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes, and you can say in evidence of speaking in tongues, when that baptism comes, now the Holy Spirit has you. There's a big difference in that. Now, the Holy Spirit is alive in you, but do you yield to the Holy Spirit? When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, now the Holy Spirit can act, move, do, give you power to be able to move in his will and in his way. You have this small voice in your head that people say, and it's like, something told me to do that. That was the Holy Spirit. But if you don't know how he speaks to you, if you don't know how God is moving through the Holy Spirit in you, you don't yield to it, and it will always be that something told me, that little voice told me, that thing told me. There is one spirit, but many manifestations. Now, you're getting a prequel to everything that we're going to go through. There's one spirit, many manifestations. So when you see people slain in the spirit, when you see, when you hear a word of prophecy, when you hear a word of knowledge in, in, in churches, and, and here's one big thing, when there is a word of knowledge and it is spoken in the spirit, there should be an interpretation behind it. The interpretation behind it lets you know what the word said. When you are praying in your own prayer language and you are praying to God in a mystery that the enemy cannot hear, discern, or be able to come against, it seems like when you're praying, you I don't know what I'm praying, but the longer you pray, the Lord gives you the interpretation and you'll start praying that too. And so there are so many different things and so many manifestations of the Holy Spirit, and I don't want it to be where you see something because we pray at our church because it is a spirit-filled, full gospel, charismatic, from one point of the Bible all the way from the beginning to the end, the whole entire Bible, that you see something here that you don't understand. We want you to be taught, we want you to be well-trained, and we do not want it to be um, foreign to you. People are afraid of what they don't understand. So when somebody gets a, a word or, you know, the, the, there's an old saying that, that a man with an experience is never at the mercy of a man with an argument. And so if you come up for healing and the Lord heals you, whether here at the altar or out in the foyer or somewhere that somebody is praying for you and, and they believe the word and your faith attaches to their faith, and, and God moves and heals you, you can't tell me that healing is not for today. That is a manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so if that happens to you, somebody can tell you, well, now that was for biblical times, and that was back then, and this is now. And, but I'm telling you, if you're healed, or if you're delivered, or if a bondage is broken off of you, or if there's a supernatural blessing that there's no way to understand or explain outside of the hand of an all-living, all-consuming, ever-loving God doing it for you, then you can't tell me it's not for today. 
We've had financial miracles. We've had deliverances happen. We've had families that are restored and put back together. And it was nothing but the hand of God. And so when you understand that for what it is, no one can tell you that the Holy Spirit is not alive and moving in your life. Now, before I go into the text, I want to tell you a story about one of my friends. He was in uh, Germany some years ago. He's one of our best friends, Pastor Pam and, and, and our best friend. And he was driving a, a car at the time, which was a really, really fast car. It was a Honda Prelude. And him and his friends, he was stationed in Germany, and he was off from Germany to another country. Liechtenstein or something like that, I believe. And so he is driving on the car and they're going to a Christian concert and it was him and two other friends in the car. And he said that there was a there was like a Mercedes that blew past him on the Autobahn. There is no speed limit. As fast as your car goes is your speed limit. The roads are big and wide and they can they're, they're designed to be able to land aircraft. So you have these big, wide, open roads. No speed limit. He's doing about 90 or 95, he says. He says, a B, uh, not a BMW, but a Mercedes flashes the lights past him saying that they're coming by. And when they went past him, his door shook. He said he had to be going about 130. Boom, just, just move right on past him. And he said, we need to pray. And they started to pray, going to this Christian concert. And he said, as soon as we said amen, we blew a tire. The car fishtailed, it flipped a couple of times, and it landed on an embankment. Now, if you've ever been to Germany, Germany is mountainous. And so uh, he was at the edge of a cliff when they got out of the car. He said, Mike, if, if we would have fell over that cliff, they would have never found us. And they got out with little or no injuries, just a few bumps, bruises, scrapes, no broken bones, no lacerations that you needed um, stitches for. It was just the power of God surrounding that vehicle. And it was funny because I had told him, I said, man, you came to mind. We were in Japan. He was in Germany. And I said, I just prayed for you. And he said, what time did you pray for me? And I told him the time that I had prayed for him. And I said, you just came on my mind real strong. And he said, let me tell you what happened. And that's what happened. So the Holy Spirit had moved on me to pray for him. They had prayed for themselves, and God had put a protection around him. He encamped his angels, and that was my prayer, encamp your angels about them. I didn't know what he was doing. I didn't have any idea. But sometimes the Lord puts you or puts someone else on your heart. The Lord uses you. And there's somebody that you're thinking about real strong. I don't know what I'm thinking about. I've just been thinking about them all day. Pray. Because there's something in the spirit that is going on. I will tell you that we're, we're about to embark in this, and there has been spiritual attacks all over. And we know that the Lord is doing something wonderful, and he's about to unleash something. So I tell our leadership team, get ready. Today is the day. Get ready because there's a fight in the spirit. Today is your day to get free. You're going to get some understanding. You're going to understand how the Lord is just pulling and prodding you and is drawing you closer. And you've been resisting and you think it's just you, but it's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a gentleman and he's going to come to you and he's going to talk to you and he's going to try to draw you to the Lord. The Holy Spirit always glorifies Jesus. He always glorifies Jesus. So when you think that, ah, that's just me thinking that, does it glorify Jesus? The Holy Spirit is going to draw you to him. And so with some understanding today, I pray that you get, you get free today and be able to move in the power that is within you. If you didn't know him today because you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, is the day. You're not going to wait another moment. You're not going to wait another instant. You're not going to wait till next Sunday because tomorrow is not promised. And I'm not doom and gloom, but I say get what you need to get done today and don't worry about tomorrow. Get it done today. We procrastinate so much and we just think that, that every day is a day that is promised to us, but it is not. 
We don't know when the Lord is going to call us home. We don't know when the time is up. There's a number of days that's assigned to each person. And after that, we're going to wake up in front of the Father. That's what it's going to be. After death, judgment comes. And so we can't say, oh, tomorrow I was going to do it. Choose ye this day who you will serve. Choose you this day who you will serve. Amen. Let's get into the scripture. Amen. 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 If you could turn with me to John chapter 14. I'm gonna, it's a long scripture, but we're going to be in this for the next several weeks. And we're going to go into the Lord says we're done. Amen. And so this is the backdrop to what we're going to talk about. And I'm going to wait till you get there. It's so vitally important. I will tell you, please take notes. Please make sure that you review your notes. This is your time that you are to be able to understand the word of God. This is Bible study on a Sunday morning. And so this is our opportunity to be able to really dig into the word of God. Amen. 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 Are we there? John chapter 14. We're going to read from verse one. Amen. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And, and where I go, you go. Uh, where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, and this is a scripture we always talk about. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Jesus is speaking words and he's been with these people and he's saying, how long must I teach you? The time is coming that I am leaving. He is saying that to us today. How many times must you sit in the, under the word and not believe the word? How, much, how many times can you come and sit in church and sit under teaching and sit under authority and not believe and not move and not understand? It is time for you to get some understanding. And he says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else, believe me for the sakes of the works themselves. I've shown you enough. You should believe. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I, that I do, he will, also, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. And the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, here's where Jesus gives us a promise. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you in you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you a little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will also you will live also at that day. You will know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments will keep them. It is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. 
Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not the world? Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words and my word which you hear is not mine, but the father who sent me. Verse 25, and we're going to end on verse 27. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, say the helper. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the comforter. I thank you for the helper, Lord. I thank you for the parting gift that you left us, that, Father, after you left, you said, I have to leave so that the Father may send the comforter, the helper, the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for sending your spirit to us, Lord. I thank you that as we learn about the Holy Spirit, that we would yield to the Spirit, that we understand that it is, He is there to correct and reproof, to support and edify, to teach and exhort us in all things, Lord, in all truth. Father, help us to yield to Him and to better understand who He is to us. Father, grow us in Your Word, grow us in Your presence, but grow us in Your Spirit. Spirit, O oh Lord, help us to be able to acknowledge him and move in his will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God is calling the church, our church, in the whole kingdom of God to the basics of our faith. See, the things that, that we don't understand the basics, and there are so many biblical truths that Every place that you seem to go, there's somebody with a different slant on a foundational truth. This includes the Holy Spirit and the understanding of the Spirit. When I think about the Holy Spirit, I think about a teacher. And I've had many teachers in my day, but when I go back to grade school, I had Mrs. Goldsmith and Miss Pacero and Miss Volgi. And Miss Volgi was my Spanish teacher, and Pastor Pam would remember Miss Volgi. And she was one of those teachers that just if you were a student that was not doing what you were supposed to do, Ms. Voji got on your last nerve. She would always correct you. She would call your parents. She would keep you after class. She was going to make sure that you got what you needed to get in order to get a good grade in her class and to graduate. No matter what you wanted to do and how you didn't think that Spanish 3 or 4 was going to impact your life, she thought that it was the most important thing and that you needed to understand what she was teaching. The Holy Spirit is like that. When we are trying to do our own thing, the Holy Spirit is trying to encourage you and support you and teach you in all things. You've had similar teachers like that throughout the school, going your own way, doing your own thing. Teachers hold an important position on this planet. They guide, counsel, explain, show, encourage, reprove, help, correct, and empower, and the list goes on and on. If you're a teacher, raise your hand because we just want to give you a round of applause. Teachers hold an important part in our society. They do all of these things to help young people and sometimes parents get to where they need to go. Other factors play a role. Students tend to su succeed or fail based upon the teachers that they're with. That's why parents at the beginning of the school year trying to find out what teacher their children have and move the teachers if they can get that that student to another class. So think about this. What if you had a chance to receive one-on-one -on -one tutoring from the greatest teacher on the planet? Jesus was the greatest teacher to ever walk the face of the earth. Yet, he said that after he left, he was going to send a helper, that the Father was going to send another helper that may abide with us forever, John 14, 16. 
And later Jesus explained that when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide us into all truth. And that's 1613. And to top it off, the counselor would do greater works than even what Jesus did. Now, that's some teacher. And we have him within us. He is there to lead us and guide us. And if you're a believer, you have been given the awesome gift of the Holy Spirit, a teacher like no other. Yet, tragically, a huge section, portion, segment of the church has never raised their hand to ask the Holy Spirit at least one question. Some sit in the classroom of life doubting if he's relevant for today, he is current in today's social setting, or if he, worse off, if he's even necessary anymore. The Holy Spirit. While others would even prefer to act like he didn't even exist. It's possible. And I've ran this through my head. It's possible to look like a spirit-filled, Bible-believing, tongue-talking, charismatic believer and not believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's possible. It's possible to sit in service every day and in service every week and not believe in them because he is the most understood person of the Trinity. First of all, the Holy Spirit is not an it. And it doesn't whisper, doesn't sing, doesn't speak, doesn't cry, doesn't convict, doesn't dance, doesn't hover, doesn't burn, doesn't wash, doesn't, it does not free, does not anoint, does not empower, does not quicken, does not reveal, does not teach, lead, supply, strengthen, enable, move, or comfort. That's our Holy Spirit. And it cannot do all of those things. Like the Father and the Son, God's Holy Spirit is a person. As long as we see him as an it, we'll fail to know him and what he desires. The Holy Spirit always glorifies Jesus. This is where a lot of us get derailed because sometimes we see things in the name of the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. Sometimes we see things in the name of the Holy Spirit, and it confuses us. Here's a, here's a test for you. Does what you see and what you are experiencing bring glory to Jesus? There are so many things that is done in the church, and some of those things are emotion-filled because we are emotional creatures. And we feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit, and sometimes we do things that is not spirit-led. It is emotional-based. And yes, your emotions are real. And yes, you may want to feel something and do something or stretch out to something. But does it glorify the Lord? Does it glorify him? Just ask him. The Spirit's number one delight and passion and the purpose is to bring glory to Jesus. Just as the Father glorified Jesus in heaven, the Spirit now glorifies Jesus on earth. The Spirit doesn't show up in part. When my children, and I have four of them, were smaller, when they got filled with the Spirit, it was not a partial filling. If your children get filled with the Spirit, they get the entire filling. They don't get a kid-sized portion. The same Spirit who is at work, was at work in me at that time was at work in them. And John 3.34 is clear that God gives the Spirit without measure. So if your children, see, we don't understand that the children are sensitive to the things of God because they don't have all of this stuff that they, and they haven't been jaded, they haven't been hurt by things, and they just believe it because the Word says it. They believe it because you speak it into them. So if you're speaking some other things into them, they can believe that too. So if, they, if you're speaking truth and life into them and you're supporting them and you're loving them and you're laying hands on them and you're praying for them and you're saying that greater is you, he's in the world, that greater is he who is in you than he's in the world. If you are saying that, that you are the head and not the tail, that you're saying that God will go before you and be your rear guard, he said that God put a plan and a purpose in your life. They believe it. 
and they're ready to embrace it, and they're ready to move out on it. And so when they get filled, when they accept the Lord and they get a filling of him, and even when they pray for a baptism, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they receive it, they don't get just a smaller version of it. They get it without measure. And the Lord can use anybody, including our kids, to speak truth to us. So you, you better watch out when, when these kids get on fire for God because they have a lot to be able to share and we need to be open to be able to receive it. Salt and light, if you're in here, you have a lot to share. Safari, you have a lot to share. Our children, they are, they are being spoken to and directed with the same Holy Spirit that we have. Amen? And let me tell you, while, while, I'm, while I'm on that point, let me just tell you, the Holy Spirit uses who he wills to use. So who are you to say, well, Liam, they're not going to use that person. You're going to miss out on the blessing because the Holy Spirit can be using that person to bless you, bring you a word that's going to bring you life, help you get delivered from something, and you're not able to receive it because of the person that the Holy Spirit chooses to use. We need to get it together. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit wants to help us, help you, help me. The word for the, for the Holy Spirit in John 14 all the way to John 16 is parakletos, which means comforter or counselor. He was sent to lead us to truth, to guide us on this journey. We talk about this journey all the time, that we are going from place to place, and God is moving us in the direction that we need to go, and he's given us a vision of where we're going down the road, but he's not telling us exactly how we're going to get there. We're taking one step, and he's showing us the next step, and we're showing us the next step. But if you get out of sync with the Holy Spirit, we can hit a landmine that the enemy set up for us, because he knows what buttons to push on us. And sometimes when we get out of step with the Holy Spirit, we go our own way and, and we get stuck somewhere. But thank God that we have the Holy Spirit that he can get us back on right track. It's like God's positioning system, GPS. He moves us right from where we're at to where we need to be. You make a wrong turn, he says, you need to recalculate. And go with the Holy Spirit, and he gets us right back to where we go. We don't ask him for help. I don't understand why we don't do that. But let me get into, for a few moments, before we end today, because I don't want to go too far. The reason why people have so much of an issue with the Holy Spirit, not just being a teacher, but the personhood, the Holy Spirit personified, is that they say, well, he's a spirit. He's not a person. It's a it. It's a this. It's a that. The Holy Spirit has a mind, a will, and it has, he has emotion. If we look at um, the Holy Spirit thinks and he knows, 1 Corinthians 2.10. If we look at 1 Corinthians 2.10, they'll pull it up on the board. If you can't get there, just write it down and then look at it later because what I want you to do, this is going to build. And every week it's going to build even more. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit thinks and he knows. The Holy Spirit can also be grieved. If we look at Ephesians 4, 25 to 32. Ephesians 4. 35, uh, 25 to, to 32. I'm going to look at that. And I want, I want you to get this, so I want to hold here for a minute for you to get there. Ephesians 5, 4, 25 to 32. Are we there? Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth to his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. We talked about that over and over and over again. How many times can we talk about getting anger under control? Anger is a foothold for the enemy. I don't care how you spin it. I don't care what somebody has done to you. You have a choice. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's, it's easy to walk away. But one of the things that we taught early on in home improvement is that you have to get to a place 
where you can walk away. Take a walk and you speak, in, speak to God, get in the presence of God. But once you become angry, you go down a road that the enemy gets a foothold on. Get rid of all anger. Get rid of all wrath. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. 27, nor give a place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has no need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Next verse. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Next verse. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. We can grieve the Holy Spirit with all of these things going on. The Holy Spirit is trying to lead you in all truth and you're doing your own thing. You're giving into your own flesh. You're doing whatever you feel like doing. If it feels good, just do it. And the Holy Spirit is screaming at you on the inside to let it go. Get it before God. Walk away. Get in the presence of the Lord. And you're just dealing with all of this stuff. And all of this stuff is just piling on. And one thing after another, after another, after another, after another. And the Holy Spirit is trying to slow you down and move you away from those things. We can grieve him. Third thing, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. Intercession is when somebody comes in and is able to help you, is able to petition on your behalf. It is an advocate. When we can't speak for ourselves, an advocate needs to come in and speak for us. When we look at the Holy Spirit making intercession for us, go to Romans 8, 26 and 27. Now, the Holy Spirit, remember, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. All of these things that I'm saying, you have inside of you. These are things that are at work inside of you. These are things that are moving, that, that should be moving inside of you, but you don't understand what you have. The Holy Spirit is your, your advocate. He is making intercession for you. He is going before you. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness. When we are weak, we need somebody there to encourage us, to be strong for us, to advocate for us, to speak for us, to go before us. To, to, help, to, to help us. We need that when we're weak. And there, let me tell you, I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how buff you are. I don't care how mentally strong you think you are. The enemy will come at you and get you weak on an occasion. Am I right? All right, I'm talking to the right crowd. I'm talking to the right crowd. The enemy can get you weak on an occasion. Come at you so many different ways. That, that you think that you got him blocked on this side and he comes over here. And those areas that you think that you have all together, that there's no way that the enemy can come in here, he comes over, under, around, and all of a sudden now, now I'm getting attacked on that front that I thought was all shored up. Sometimes you need an advocate. Sometimes you need an intercessor. Sometimes you need somebody that's going to be there to come and help you when you're weak. So the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray as, for, as we ought. But the, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. Now, somebody asked me about this question about the Holy Spirit and, and praying in your prayer language. See, sometimes you just don't know what to pray. You're thinking that you should be praying for this, and Lord... Just, just give me this and give me this. And the Lord knows that if he blessed you with that, it would not be a blessing. It will be a blessing for you, you think, but it will actually be a curse because God knows down the road how that thing is going to affect you. And when you are praying amiss, you know, you got to pray according to God's will. See, that's the thing that we don't talk about. If you pray anything according to his will, then you shall receive it. But if you're not praying according to his will, you're just praying and, and it's not even being heard. And so now we, we don't know what to pray. Sometimes people say, I'm praying for you. Just pray in the spirit, brother. 
just pray in the spirit. You don't even know what to pray for me. Just pray, just pray. In the, and it's not being it's not being snooty or anything. But sometimes people could be praying the wrong things over you. There, there have been many a prayer line that I have been on throughout my years in Christ that you go and somebody wants to pray for you and they're praying all upside down and wrong. And you walk away and I say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Because the Lord is not going to tell you something about you that he didn't tell, you, tell somebody else for them to tell you first. So when you are hearing something and it's brand new, that it's not even down in the deep recesses of you, that you don't even want to speak out because it's so big, it's so, it's so enormous, it's so, it's, I don't even want to touch on that because it's too much, Lord, me, me, or you're dealing with me in this issue and the Lord says, you're not hearing me. I'm talking to you about this. Now I'm going to bring it up to somebody else and they're going to talk to you about it. If the Lord, if it's brand new and you hear it for the first time, you better question that word. Because the Holy Spirit is going to talk to you about it first. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody because there are many things that have been prayed amiss. Even the, the people with the best intentions, sometimes they hear wrong. We're people. We're flawed. Even pastors. So you have to check the spirit by the spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercessions for the saints according, and this is a key word, according to the will of God. Amen. See, he's speaking on your behalf according to God's will. He can't pray wrong. We're praying all types of crazy stuff. God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I want this, I want this. And you can't even handle the things that you have, the portion that you have, the measure that you have right now. You can't even handle that, and you're looking for more. Why do you want more? To mess up what, what more is? Handle what you have right now. Do what you have in front of you right now. Be faithful with what you have right now, and then God, through your faithfulness and through growing you and through maturing you, he can give you more. But we want everything right now. And the Holy Spirit says, you're going to hold on, because when you pray in the Spirit, I'm going to pray and cancel out all that nonsense that you just prayed because I'm going to pray the will of the Father. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes decisions according to his will. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. 1 Corinthians 12. Let's go 7 through 11. Amen? Amen. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Okay, amen, amen, amen. So the Spirit makes decisions according to his will. Now, when we say his will, that's the will of the Father because the Spirit, the Son, and the Father are all in link. And so, again, Jesus said, I only speak what the Father spoke. The Spirit only does what the Father says to do. Amen? So here we go, 1 Corinthians 12. 7 through 11. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So now it says that the Spirit gives the gift for the profit of all. The Spirit. So you can't sit up here, and I'm going to point out my sister for a minute, and say, I want that. I want, I want what she does. I want to be able to lay hands on people and do that thing. One, let me help you. I'm going to try not to get so excited. You want that, but you don't want what she went through. There was a price to pay for that. There were some things that she needed to do to get that. There was a journey that she needed to take that the Lord says that the gift that she has, she's going to be able to use it to bring myself glory because that, that she was there was a time that, that they didn't look at her like that. There was a time that they didn't think of her like that. There was a time that she went through some hurt and some pain, and God said, I could trust her because I brought her out of that. You don't want none of that. You just want what you see is going on. The Lord can trust her, and it says that the Spirit will give that as he wills. 
Now, there are times that you could be used like that, but sometimes what happens is the Lord uses us like that, and the, the first thing you want to do is open up a healing ministry. I'm a healer. The Lord healed this person through me. No, the, the, the Spirit decided to use you like that on that occasion. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Because if the Lord needs to use you in that moment like that to benefit somebody that he is trying to get a hold of, he's going to use you. And he's got to trust you that you're not going to get crazy and that you're going to start puffing yourself up. See, she is the most humble person that I know. She is. She just moves. You've seen her. She just moves. She just moves. She just moves. And the Lord tells her where to go. And as her pastor, I sit back and allow the Lord to use her because I know that that's her gift. And some of you have gifts here as well. And we allow you to use those gifts as you're in covenant with us because the Lord has it for his people. He has it for his people, and he wants his people to be blessed. I don't have all the gifts, nor should I. This is my gift, and it made room for me. This is my gift. And the gifts that you have, I'm bringing them into the house as quickly as we can and getting them vetted before the Lord so that the Lord can have everything he needs in the house so he can equip his people so we can go out the house. we got to take this out. It's not for here. This is a place of edification and of equipping, for strengthening, for sharpening. But the work is outside. It's outside. Amen. Amen. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another a word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit. There is, there's people that faith is so high in this place that if they, it, it, where, where's my brother at? I, I don't see him in here, but, but if you know Matt Gavigan, he is high in faith. If the word said it, then, then Matt believes it. That's a gift. That's a gift to another gifts of healing into the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another ter- interpretation. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually. Can we say it? Can we say it again? One more time. Amen. As he wills. It's his will. It's not my will. It's not the, it's not the associate pastor's will. It's not your will. It's as he wills. As he wills. So let me help you. Stop looking at somebody else wanting their gift. Explore who God is in you and use your gift. Because your gift is for the people too. And if he does by chance use you in that particular gift that you're so desiring, don't get so hung up on it and say, I wish he would use me again. How come he's not using me anymore? Because you miss it. You miss it. There's something special about you and your gift. And if you use your gift the way it's supposed to be used, then there's nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Everything is in the house. So whoever, whosoever walks through that door, there is a gift in place to be able to minister to them like only you can minister to them with your gift. We're so worried about everybody else. We're so worried about everybody else that we miss who we are. Are. Amen? Okay. As we prepare to close, I want to give you three things that talks about how the Holy Spirit moves. The Holy Spirit is also omniscient, omnipotent, omnipotent, and omnipresent. He's all knowing, He's all seeing, and He's everywhere. Psalms 139, Psalms 139, 7 and 8, as Caleb prepares to play. Psalms 139, 7 and 8. This talks about the omnipresence of God. Amen. This is what I want you to understand. I'm going to take a moment. Sometimes we run and we hide. We're we're so like Jonah. Oh, my Lord. We, We just, we get so caught up in everything. And stuff happens, 
And there's a commercial right now about an airline, I don't know, maybe Southwest Airline, and something happens in, in the commercial says, want to get away? And sometimes we want to get away. Sometimes we have a day like no other day. Sometimes there's stuff that happens in our life like, man, I can't handle one more thing. And then one more thing happens. Sometimes we say something, and immediately after we say it, we know it was the wrong thing to say. And you're like, oh, I can't get it back. And I, I didn't mean that. No, out the heart, out of the mouth, your heart spoke, and you spoke it, so you meant it, and so I'm hurt. There are things that happen, and we just want to hide. There's things that God is calling us to. The Holy Spirit is prompting you even right now. You've been running. You've been hiding. I see you. I see you all the way in the back. I see you in the far side. I see you in the dark. I see you. And not only do I see you, I know you by your name. I know what I put inside of you. I know what I've called you to. I know how I fashioned and formed you. I know you. And you can hide and run and try to escape but you're only fooling yourself. I love you and I never stop loving you. Yes, there are some things that happen. Yes, there's a sowing and a reaping. But when the reaper comes, if I'm with you, I can defend and deflect. I can get you to where you need to be. When I created you in your mother's womb, I chose you for a purpose. I chose you for a reason. I chose to put you with the family that I chose to put you with. It was no accident. Psalms 139 says, 7 and 8, where can I go, Lord, from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Wherever I go, Lord, your spirit you're there. No matter how far I run, no matter how many mistakes I've made, there's nowhere that I can go from your spirit. There's no place that I can hide from your presence. Wherever I am, your presence is right there with me. If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. From the highest heights to the lowest depths, God is there. That there's no place that you could go that is away from his presence. That he loves you. He is not leaving you. He is not forsaking you. He promised that that would be true. And so his Holy Spirit is in you that wherever you go, he's there. No matter how many mistakes you've made, he's there. And even if you make mistake after mistake after mistake, God has a way to meet you in the stench of your mistake and bring you back home. And when you make a step coming towards the Father, he's running towards you. He's not going to leave you hanging out there. He's not going to just leave you alone. He says, yes, you made mistakes, but you're my child. You think of your child and you think of how many mistakes that they've made throughout the years and every time they come home, you are there. That you would move heck and high water to help them. That you won't leave them. You won't leave them by themselves. Do you know how many people that have been in prison and you see moms going to their sons, going to their daughters, that no matter what they have done, they're still their child. And sometimes we're in a prison of our own making. And God is still there through his Holy Spirit ministering to us saying that you could walk out of this cage anytime you want. I've made provision for you. I've never stopped loving you. He is there. And God is all-knowing. So sometimes we think that we can hide what we're going through from God, but he knows it. He knows it. We're thinking all of these things and we have all this anxiety in us and we don't want to bring it to the altar 
and say, well, God is going to be upset at me and I shouldn't be thinking. This. Don't you know he knows that already? Our last scripture for today, 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 11, again. We're going to close on this. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man, except the spirit of a man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. God searches you. He knows you. He knows your insecurities and your thoughts. Let me stop right there. He knows your insecurities. No one wants to say that they're insecure about anything. Everybody wants to be tough on the outside. and the, the, We're in this thing with God, and I'm not insecure about anything. But if the Lord searched deep in your heart, see, when we talk about the prodigal son, that the Lord puts a... a the Lord put a robe on that son that he didn't expose him and what he's been through to anybody. So when you come to the Lord, the Lord puts a robe on you so that he doesn't expose what you've been through and what you're dealing with currently. And when you get past that, you have a testimony. That's why Revelation says that we're more than an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Until you have a testimony, God covers you and doesn't expose you. So all of those insecurities that you have, God covers it. He covers it. The Spirit covers it for you while he is working those things out in you. So let's not pretend that there's things that we got going on in our lives that, that we got it all together. God knows. I'm going to call our altar ministers up. And then we're going to close out. Today is a special day. You feel the Holy Spirit pulling you. You feel him pulling you. There's an explanation behind that. The Spirit is calling to the Spirit that is within you. He's saying no more hiding. There's no shame, none whatsoever. There's only peace, joy, and love in the Holy Spirit. That he wants to correct you, teach you, reproof you, support you, encourage you, strengthen you, give you courage where there's no courage. He can do all that in you. He wants to take that insecurity and cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. He wants to give you a security in who he is in your life. Today is the day. But maybe you don't know the Holy Spirit because you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Today is your day that you get a chance to have a first-hand encounter with him. We want to introduce you to him so that you could be filled with the Spirit. It's an important day. Manifestations. And those manifestations are in your people right now. Strengthen them, stir them up right now in Jesus' name. Father, for insecurity of things that have happened in the past, we just cut that right now. We, we bind the hand of the enemy on every, anyone's life who feels insecure, inadequate, less than, discounted, or cast aside. That, Father, you fill and give gifts as you will. Father, I ask that you work on the hearts of every young person. In Jesus' name, that they will understand who they are in the body of Christ. So, Father, move like you've never moved before in this place. Create a moment where people come to you and understand that you love them with an all-consuming, everlasting love. Nothing missing, lacking, or broken in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The altars are still open. We ask that you exit if you need to exit in an attitude of worship. Amen. I love you all. I'll see you all on Wednesday. Amen. And amen. Um, you got something?
Um, don't forget mandate. I forgot to say this. The Spirit of God was moving. We have mandate on, on Saturday. 